When we think of Indonesian art, we tend to think only about the traditional, exotic, and sacred crafts. However, Indonesia has a long history of economic, political, and social change reflected in their art. Indonesia is located in Southeast Asia and their UNESCO site is famous for its graceful mix of Hindu-Buddhism culture, since this country is a mix of multiple religions and they have a diverse culture. Their traditional art consists of puppets, batik, mask carving, wood carvings, pottery, and glass paintings. The wine puppet is their most popular form of puppet art. Sama, one of the most popular figures, and the wise counselor of the king and lords comes on stage. A choir accompanies the performance with its singing. Samar crosses the stage. Samar is an important figure present in all performances. The Raro no Demon is hit by the arrow. The late 70s was the rise of modern Indonesian art. As they departed from the traditional art, modern Indonesian art emphasizes the development of individual creative expressions of artists. Indonesian art illustrates realistic culture of both indigenous characters and international influences integrated in harmony. Indonesian art is diverse with a rich history and culture worth knowing. Katsushika Hokusai, known as Hokusai, was born in Edo, now known as Tokyo in Japan. He was a Japanese artist who was a printmaker and a painter. Most historians believe that he was influenced by his father, Nakajime Ise, who was a skilled mirror maker. Hokusai developed an interest in the ukiyo-e style for a decade. Ukiyo-e is a Japanese art form that excelled from the 17th to 19th century, and it is composed of wood block prints, and painting from Edo period depicting famous theater actors, beautiful court scenes, city life, travel in romantic places, and erotic scenes. In the year 1820, Hokusai created beautiful works including the 36 views of Mount Fuji and the Great Wave of Kanagawa. The materials he used to make the spectacular art is ink and color on paper and the polychrome, which is a multicolored woodblock print. The importance of this artwork is that it is a representational illustration of the essential change that occurred in the Japanese society. A fundamental change that brought the presence of outside impacts that emerged from the upheaval of the sea in contrast to the calmness and stillness of Mount Fuji, the current existing symbol of Japan. In the same year, he changed his name to Litsu, and under the new name, he painted several pieces that made him famous in Japan and even in Europe. For every masterpiece that he made, he also changes his name. Since he believed that every time he changed his name, he would be able to make more detailed art style. Hokusai relocated 93 times and changed his name 33 times. In May 10, 1849, but according to others, he died on April 18th. The legendary Kutsushika Hokusai died in Edo, which is now Tokyo, Japan. The last word he said was, unless heaven could indeed add 10 years to my existence, I'll be happy. Laotian art is just as diverse as any other Asian art, as they vary from visual arts, dramas, music, literature, sculptures, and classical dances according to their tradition and religion. The predominant religion of Lao is Theravada Buddhism. Theravada Buddhism and Hinduism are major influences on the cultural and intellectual life in Laos, and Lao Chan literature is predominantly religious and linked to Buddhist tradition. There are two famous sculptures carved in some precious stones. First is the Frakeo or the Emerald Buddha. Its origin is from Xing Sin and it is carved from a solid block of jade. This sculpture rested in Vientiane for 200 years. The second one is the Frafara Batsaravet, which is enshrined in its own chapel in the Grand Place in Bangkok. 
the goddess Tara. Revered by both Buddhists and Hindus, the deity symbolizes mercy and compassion. This statue of her, one of Sri Lanka's most sacred and valuable antiques, is cast in bronze and plated in gold. But for almost 200 years, it was on display miles away at the British Museum in London. Bronze sculptures created in Laotian art are an alloy of copper and contain 2% of tin. As for their classical dances, by the 16th century, a Lao version of Ramayana was known as the Frakfaram. <laughs> In ancient times, Nepal had a distinguished form of art and culture. The Nepalese had their own way on how to make a spectacular artwork, just like architectural buildings, wooden carvings, mandalas, and paintings. There is a Nepalese architect named Aranika or Arnika. Arnika or Aranika was an architect who created sculptures in Nepal and is equally famous in China because of his artwork. Arnico was accorded high honors for his work and was named as the director of all the artisan classes in 1273. At the age of 62, in the year 1306, when the sculptor died, his ashes were buried in the stupa at Gangyan Xiangshan. Two of the masterpieces by Arnico are a Thanka painting of Green Tara, the goddess of compassion, and the sculpture of Tara, a female deity in Hinduism and Buddhism made out of limestone. Contemporary Thai paintings take root from the traditional Thai designs. Since the 1970s, neo-traditionalism Thai art styles has emerged. Neo-traditionalism is an art representation that incorporates traditional culture and Thai Theravada Buddhist themes. Silva Virasri is known as the father of Thai contemporary arts, and the characteristics of Thai contemporary art along with its uniqueness are, first, its religious ties. Their art encompasses religious elements and age-old belief of life of Buddha and Hinduism gods and goddesses. Second is the scale of the subject. They created their art in accordance with their statue. Third are colors. They used color schemes that have that dimension. Fourth and finally, the perspective. In Thai art, their works are depicted from top to bottom. In the copper era, it was popular to create utensil products, household wares, and jewelry. In their alloy era, the finest cultural item is the large bronze drum. During the iron era, they created weapons, statues of Buddha, and earthenware. The types of Thai arts and crafts are pottery, textiles and embroidery, and carving and engraving. In pottery, there is an unglazed surface and the plain pattern. In textiles and embroidery, they create handmade products with unique patterns that not even machinery can make. For their carvings and engravings, teak wood carvings were popular in Thailand. <laughs> 